All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Doc, who the heck was that? Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Heinz tied of the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened, to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. What's in the box? Don't touch that! It's plutonium! But, uh, plutonium? How do you think I generated 1.21 gigawatts of power? Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared, and the flux dispersal rate is inversely... Doc, something's way off here. Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! No! 
I'm sorry, Marty. Ah, come back! Ah! Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom. I it was it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now, back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap! I'm late. Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Hey, let me... Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. didn't take any of these with him. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? I miss Einstein. I'd better stick around. Doc might have left something important behind, and he wouldn't want it to end up at Biff's place. He's dead. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! What's Biff doing here? He wasn't a friend of Doc's. It's a public sale, Marty. Everyone's allowed. <laughs> Even Biff. 
I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. What did you dream? Oh, just <laughs> weird stuff yeah, about Doc. Well, that's understandable, don't you think? I guess, but I feel like it was telling me something. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Let's make some noise. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley, way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse! You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank! Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, ha. But really, can I? No, nah, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to- Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Doc must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. <laughs> that smells like beef stew. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. You got it, Mr. McFly. Hey, Biff. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. Ah, uh, never mind. Hey, Dad, wh why is my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up, I'll iron things out with the bank. He's dead.
That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, <laughs> gosh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. Hey, Dad. About Biff. Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way, but you know where to find me. Problem? Biff? He's got this... thing, see, and I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. He found it first, but... Oh, well then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint! Whatever you say. Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, Doc. Where are you?